So number eight on the practice midterm. Uh, we want to cancel out X's or Y's. Pick one. What do you think? What's easier to cancel, X's or Y's? Y's. Why is it easier? Smaller numbers, right? You could change negative two to become negative six by multiplying everything by three, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Multiply everything by three. That way, this becomes a negative six Y that will cancel with the positive six Y. If you wanted to cancel out X's, You'd have to change this to a 70 and this to a negative 70. Huge numbers gets ugly. So always analyze before you start working. Go for the shortest, quickest route. So the top equation, we're modifying by multiplying everything by 3. So I'm going to have 21x minus 6y equals 3 times 30 is 90. 3 times 6 is 18. 90 plus 18 is 108. So 108, I did distributive property in my head. Anyways, we have that equation for the top. The bottom one, we're going to keep the same. 10x plus 6y equals 78. Wow, that's going to be ugly, huh? Whatever. Let's go for this. The y's cancel. There's no more uh, y's. We have 21 plus 10. That will be 31x. And all of a sudden, I'm not feeling that comfortable. But 108 plus 78 is 186, correct? 186. And now we're supposed to divide by 31, and I'm not feeling good. X equals, of course, we could use calculators. And thank goodness that the answer is 6. Have a nice, beautiful answer. Now, of course, you could get fractions, right? It's just they're harder to work with. Anyways, we have an answer, X equals 6. Let's plug in 6 for x into any equation to get the y value, to find the other answer. So I want to plug in the 6 right up here into the x. So my top equation, I'm going to rewrite it. It's going to say 7x, but instead of x, I'm putting a 6 in there. Minus 2y equals 36. Okay, so 7 times 6, 42, minus 2y equals... 36. And then what do I do? Subtract 42. Subtract 42. I have a new equation that reads, what's my new equation? Negative 2y equals negative 6. And then I divide by negative 2 on both, and I'll get my final answer, y equals positive 3. So we really have the answer as a coordinate, uh, 6, 3. So, of course, if you're taking the midterm, it's only 20 questions. You're probably going to have some time left over. It's a good idea to double-check your answer. So, for example, uh, on the bottom equation... 10 times x is really 10 times 6. That's 60 right there. And 6 times y, that's 6 times 3, that's 18. 60 plus 18 really is 78. So you've checked the bottom. Let's check the top. Plug in 6 for x. Uh, 6 times 7 is 42. Let me just jot that down, 42 right there. And then if we go uh, 3 times 2 is 6. So... 2 times 6 is 12, so you're really going to have a 42 take away 12, and we'll see that that really does give us 36, so you double-checked it. We're absolutely positive that this is the correct answer right there, 6, 3. Number 9. Number 9, write an equation in slope-intercept form with the given slope and the y-intercept. Ladies and gentlemen, if you miss this on the midterm, I'm going to slap you. I'm joking. Y equals MX plus B. That's slope-intercept form. They want you to write it in slope-intercept form. And guess what? They give you the slope and they give you the intercept. So what's the equation? There you go. Too easy. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to slap you, but like seriously, that's ridiculously easy. If you get that wrong, there's, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> going to the second page of this practice midterm, uh, number 10, we have to graph inequalities here. I hope we remember how to graph inequalities. Um, 
Let's graph the top one in red. So it's already in y equals mx plus b form. It crosses the y-axis at the value of 2 because the b value is 2. And from that point, I look at my slope, which is 2 over 1, right? So you're going to go up 2 over 1. So there's my point. And you could use the same slope but backwards. Instead of going up 2 over 1, go over 1 this way, down 2. Over 1 this way, down 2. And you could keep going over 1, down 2, over 1, down 2 to extend it as far as you want. Um, the question is, or the first question is, will this be a solid line right here? Or is it going to be a dotted line? Dotted because it does not have a solid line underneath the inequality. If it had a solid line underneath the inequality like this one does, then it will be solid. But if it doesn't have a solid line underneath it, it's not going to be solid. It's going to be dotted. So let me put a couple more dots or dashes right between these. So there's my line so far. But in addition to deciding if it's solid or dotted, you also need a shade. Your answers are either going to be on this side of the dotted red line or on this side of the dotted red line. So uh, how do we do that? We need to test a value, test a point. The easiest point to test, if it's available, uh, is the point zero, zero. So if you check out the origin, zero, zero, which is clearly on this side of the line, if I test zero, zero and it works, it means that it is an answer, it means that all my answers are over here. If I test 0, 0 and it doesn't work, that means that none of these are answers. That means that my, all of my answers are over here. So you need to shade in where your answers are at. So let's test the easiest point to test 0, 0. So the top equation, if we test 0 for x, 0 for y, it'll read 0 is less than 2 times 0 plus 2. Now 2 times 0 is nothing. So you really have 0 is less than 2. What do you think of that? Is that true or false? True. So this zero, zero does work. It is an answer. So I need to shade in that side of my answers, or on that side of my graph, of my line. So I want to shade it in with lightly. Okay. Now I need to ignore what I just did and go to my other uh, equation, inequality, and graph it. I want to graph this one in blue. This one right here in blue. That one crosses at negative 3. Now from that point, what do I do? What's my slope? What's my slope? Negative one over one. So from this point, I want to go down one over one. So if it were positive, you go up, but if it's negative, you go down. You're going down one, you always run to the right. So down one over one is right here. You could continue down one over one. You could use the pattern backwards to extend it in the other direction. Okay, so once again, we went down one over one, down one over one. You could go backwards, over one, up one, over one, up one, to get all these other coordinates. Okay, so we still need to decide if it's going to be a solid line or a dotted line. What do you think? Solid. solid. Okay, so let's put a solid line right there. Completely solid. Whoa, that's disgusting. I apologize. And now, after that, you need to shade in either this top part of the blue line or this bottom part of the blue line. Okay, so... How do we do that? We need to test a point like 0, 0. So I'm going to test 0, 0 again to see if it works. Plug in 0 for y and 0 for x. And it will say 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. What do you think of that? Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 3? Yeah. Yes. So that's true. So this point does work. That means that all of these points above the blue line are going to work. So I need to shade in all of those above the blue line. So I'm going to shade in everything up here. Now, what really matters is your overlap piece. So where is it overlapping? Um, it's overlapping right here. So I'm going to go for a thicker. Actually, let me change colors here. Let me go for purple southwest. That's right. So my overlap piece is right here. So that's what you're going to see on the test. Actually, this shading will probably be so light that you won't see it. This, you won't see it. You're only going to see this dotted piece, solid piece, and everything shaded over here. That's your answer for that one. So, number 11. That one's almost like the, uh, the other one that was so easy that I might get confused. Find the inverse. Remember, the process of finding the inverse of an equation is switching x and y and solving for y. 
But the process of finding the inverse of some coordinates is simply switching x and y. You can't solve for y because it's not an equation that you could solve. It's just coordinates. So what's your answer actually going to be? 19, comma, 15. Don't change any signs, right? This one's going to be negative 8, positive 11. And this last one, negative 18, negative 1. Done, right? The only difference between this one and the one on the test is on the test, there's like five or six of them. So you got to go through and check your multiple choice answers, see which one uh, switches the X and Y values perfectly, not changing any of the signs, all right? So that's like another free point right there. Write the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line passing through the given point and it's parallel to the given equation. Okay, so this is a good one. They want it to write, they want us to write in slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b, that's slope-intercept form. Um, but they give us some more information. They tell us that they give us, they give us a point, and here's your point, x, y, but they also tell us that our line is going to be parallel to the given line. Okay, so parallel means same slope. So parallel means same slope. So indirectly, they're giving us a slope. They give us a point. They're giving us a slope, but you need to find the slope. You can't just say, oh, the slope is 4. That's not true. This is in standard form. You need to first change it to slope-intercept form so you could even see the slope that they're giving you. All right, so let's first get the uh, y by itself. So we'd have to subtract 4x. Sub well, sorry. Subtract 4x. So you're going to have y equals negative 4x minus 1. Now, this is the new equation that they give you. But the only thing that you care about is their slope. So indirectly, you're pulling out that negative 4, and you don't care about anything else about this equation. Okay? So now you know your slope. Your slope is negative 4, m equals negative 4. And they want us to write it in slope-intercept form. Let's write that down, y equals mx plus b. In order, for, in order for us to write it in y equals mx plus b form, you need your m, which we already know, and we need a b value, which we need to find out. So let's plug in our x value and our y value, our x value right here, our y value right here, and plug in our m value right here and solve for b. So let's plug in the negative 2 equals negative 4, uh, times x, which is times 1, plus b. So you're going to have the equation negative 2 equals negative 4 plus b. And if you subtract, or actually add 4 on both sides, you're going to get 2 equals b, and now you know your b value. Your b value is 2. So once you know your m and once you know your b, you'll be able to write it in slope-intercept form, and the answer will be y equals m, which is negative 4, x plus b, which is plus 2.